Welcome. I'm Ray Lutz and I'm here. I'd like to uh, have a discussion with Richard Matthews, who's running for state senate of California. Welcome, Richard. I could talk to you. Now, Richard, what is the general, what is the area you're planning to serve here in your candidacy and what are the main issues that you're looking at? Well, the, the, this, this is the district, I've, I've been joking sadly that it's the uh, district that is being turned into a cloud of methane here in Puerto Ranch. Uh, we have the uh, side of the gas leak right here behind us. Okay, uh, on this mountain back here. Yeah, okay. right. And uh, the, the district uh, runs through uh, the uh, uh, western part of Los Angeles County and eastern part of Ventura County, uh, San Fernando Valley, Malibu, uh, Thousand Oaks, Santa Clarita. Okay, now um, we're here at Porter Ranch just so everybody knows. This is the most affected community of this met huge blowout we had for the recent days. And this was just um, halted in the last few days. Um, just describe this a little bit more about this blowout here that we had for the viewers. Well, the the uh, gas has been coming out as fast as a ton of gas per minute. Oh my God. Which is enough gas to fill a small bedroom per second. And we're 10 million seconds into this. <clears throat> it's been a terrible disaster. We've had something like 20,000 people who were pushed out of their homes by this. That's something like 20% of the people who live within five miles. Uh, the businesses in the area have been devastated by so many people leaving. And it, it's just been really terrible for the health of residents and for the economics of the area. Okay, so I, I imagine this is going to be a, uh, a key point uh, for your campaign. Uh, but what are some of the other issues that you see on the map for um, California government that you think you can have a big impact on? Well, my background is engineering and science. I started in astrophysics at Caltech and then uh, moved on into a career in computer engineering, designing computer components and software. And I want to use that experience so that in Sacramento we develop policy based on sound science. And so, you know, that obviously applies to environmental science, but also to economic science, to education, to so many of the things we do. Science helps us predict what the results will be of the policies that we develop. And so it lets us pick the right policies that will get the results that we need. Okay, good. So you actually are, uh, have you been involved in a lot of the climate research at all, or at least aware of what's been going on in that area? Certainly aware. I've, I've been a, a climate hobbyist uh, okay. since the 90s, uh, and, and use my science experience so that I can read the paper. The, the scientific papers, uh, and use my, my long experience in politics. I, I've been uh, regional vice chair of the Los Angeles County Democratic Party, a okay. member of the executive board of the California Democratic Party, and I want to use that experience so that I help the scientists and the policymakers talk to each other, that I speak both languages and can help the scientists understand the limitations the policymakers have and for the policymakers to understand the needs of the scientists. Okay, good. I think there's a shortage of that in, the, in government, if you ask me. Uh, now, other than this devastating, this disaster here at Aliso Canyon uh, storage facility, uh, which is, how, how do you rate that as far as a disaster on the, uh, recent disasters on a, from a climate standpoint? Oh, from a climate standpoint, it, it's massive. It, it uh, was as much uh, climate is as much methane as one quarter of all methane that is normally released throughout all of California, all from a single well. But there's another big methane hot spot at the Four Corners area, really, okay. Colorado, New Mexico area. And uh, that hot spot isn't considered to be a single source. They think that it's a lot of different wells that are each leaking small amounts. But this one well is leaking about the same amount of gas as that entire uh, Four Corners hot spot. Okay, so now if you're elected and you become the senator, what uh, You'll be probably working on this, but what other issues do you see? Do you think are important to the residents in the area? Well, starting with the environment, we have a lot of environmental issues in this area. We have Santa Susana Field Laboratory, which is in the hills over on this side of us. 
and uh, that uh, was the site of a nuclear power built down in 1959. And in all these decades, we still have not cleaned up the mess from that and from other dumping of nuclear waste there. And there was also rocket testing that went on over there. And they would take terrible chemicals like trichloroethylene and pour that over the rocket components to clean the, the components. And they just let the TCE run down into the ground and so there's hundreds of thousands of gallons of TCE in the groundwater there and we have been fighting for a very long time to get that cleaned up. We got an agreement from two of the three polluters at the site, NASA and the Department of Energy, to get that cleaned up to background levels. That means removing all detectable pollutants. Um, we're still fighting with the third polluter, which is Boeing, to try to get them to do just as good a job of cleaning up that site. We have other pollution problems in this area. We have the uh, Chatsworth Nature Preserve that we want to make sure it really gets preserved. The Los Angeles River. There's uh, the Whitaker Burmite site uh, in Santa Clarita, which was the site of a uh, nuclear, uh, a, 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 a weapons uh, uh, depot, a weapons manufacturing site, uh, and uh, had uh, uh, depleted uranium and a lot of other uh, pollutants left over from, from that. We need to get that cleaned up. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, pesticides in Moore Park that they spray on the strawberries and, and cause problems for the workers and for schools that are nearby. Uh, so we have a lot of these environmental issues and we need to use the science to make sure that we really determine what is dangerous and what we can do to, to get rid of those dangers. In, in other areas where science has an effect is in economics. Uh, I've been a, a big advocate for an increase in the minimum wage. I wrote okay. the California Democratic Party's position on increasing the minimum wage and tying it to inflation. And when we wrote that position, we succeeded shortly after to get a 25% increase in the minimum wage. That wasn't enough, and we didn't get it tied to inflation, so we still need to do more, and I'm still fighting on that, and we are going to get that big increase in the minimum wage. And what the science says is in the many times that minimum wage has been in increased across the country in different local areas or nationwide, it has never caused the bad effects that Republicans claim. It has never caused jobs to be lost. It has never caused any significant increase in prices or loss of profits. And the reason is when you increase the minimum wage, you make money move faster through the economy. And so the same amount of money is able to create a larger amount of income. And that's what ends up paying for the higher wages, not increased prices or lost jobs. Wow, okay. Uh, so minimum wage, um, any other areas that you see are uh, sort of hot spots on the area of yeah, that you're working on in their campaign? Well, I, I also fought for and succeeded in getting the, the California Democratic Party to make its top legislative priorities include overturning Citizens United so that we have fair elections uh, and restoring Glass-Steagall banking protections which protect our insured deposits if you don't have that separation of different types of banking businesses. You have the banks gambling with our insured deposits and the result is the insurance can go out of business, can go bankrupt, and that causes runs in banks. So we need to bring back those Glass-Steagall banking protections that succeeded for decades in yes. preventing any runs they in were banks. Very important. So uh, the fact that those were, were uh, eliminated in the Clinton uh, era was very disruptive and seemed to be the real cause of, or the, the underlying cause, or you could back out and say this is one of the key points to the final financial collapse. I think. Now, um, what else do you see? Is there any other hot spots on your campaign that you're really working on? Um, th those are the, the top, top issues. Ones, okay. I, I, uh, what, one last one that I would mention would be uh, debt-free education. Oh, yeah. We need to be doing that. In this area, we have lost a lot of high-tech jobs. We used to have computer companies, right. aerospace companies, medical manufacturing companies, and they have all cut back or left the area. And the reason is we have great educational institutions in the area, but our students graduate and they have high amounts of debt. They can't afford the high cost of living in Los Angeles, and so they move elsewhere. And then the companies say, well, we don't have the uh, workforce that we need to keep these bus businesses going, so they move elsewhere. So we need to have debt-free education. We've done it before. In the 1960s, California had a master plan for education that called for all public colleges to be free of 
fees and tuition. Oh, that moved and away from we that, need, haven't they? Yeah, we need to get back to that. We've done it before, we can do it again. Right. Okay, now have you um, have you endorsed any candidate for president at this point? Have, are you uh, endorsing someone? Um, I, I haven't formally endorsed, but I would say that uh, my views are very closely aligned with those of Bernie, but I will absolutely support either candidate uh, for uh, the general election uh, because, you know, we just saw yesterday the uh, death of Scalia and we've got a Supreme Court nomination coming up. Mm -hmm. We need to get that uh, nomination through quickly. We can't oh, afford to, to leave the courts shorthanded. Uh, and we have dragged their feet over that. I we know. have we three. We have three other justices who are of similar age, and the next president is probably going to be having three more points, including Scalia. With the four of them, the court is going to shift either two seats more conservative or two seats more liberal. And it's got to be two seats more liberal. We've got to elect a Democratic president. Exactly. Richard, I really appreciate your time. Best of luck to you in, your, in this election. Thank you very much. Good talking to you.